is up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Colin Bracken and this is my 2020 F350 Power Stroke. If you're a returning subscriber, a lot of this stuff is not going to be necessarily new information, but more in depth from the questions that you guys have been answer or asking is how do I afford all the stuff that I have, okay? This is my brand new truck. We just bought this about three weeks ago. We've already done wheels and tires. We've got paint match. We've got a leveling kit on it. We've got a sound system in the works. I've got a bed cover, bed rug, and we have so much more to come, okay? Now, my plans with this truck, I'll explain a little bit more at the end of this video, so that way if you watch all the way to the end, you'll get a little bit more inside scoop of what we're gonna be doing with this truck. But, let's go ahead and dive into today's video. How do I afford this stuff? So, long story short is, the, the answer is not going to be what you guys want it to be. A, l a lot of people want it to be that my parents bought it or that I have a trust fund or that for some way or the other that I don't actually work for this stuff and that couldn't be more far from the truth. So the first thing that I want to say is if you are looking for handouts in life, you're not going to be happy, period. It doesn't matter how much stuff you have, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be actually, truly, and deeply fulfilled. What you're going to have is material things that you didn't work for. You're not going to want to maintain them. You're not going to want to take care of them. You're not going to appreciate them near as much if somebody gives it to you. So let's go ahead and start with my parents are not the reason that I have this truck, but I do want to say thank you to them because I don't know that I would have this truck without them. So from a very early age, my parents were very wealthy. They, 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 I don't know if they had a lot of money, but they never spent a lot of money, but they always seemed like they made a lot of money. So we thought they had a lot of money. In reality, now knowing they invested a lot of money. So they would make money, they would work really hard, they would save up and they would spend their money on things that were gonna make them a return so they could retire later in life. Now, the first thing that my parents taught me was a work ethic. You had to save up for the things that you wanted, okay? I was 14 years old and the iPod Touch came out. I wanted a 32 gigabyte one and my sister had it, okay? And she had this iPod Touch and I wanted it so bad. So what did, what did my parents make me do? They made me work for the iPod, okay? It was $299. I remember everything specifically because this is what taught me work ethic, okay? So it's $299. So, I was working at $5 an hour because I was 14 and I couldn't really do all the stuff that a, a real minimum wage employee could. So I started working and I started saving up for this iPod that, that I really wanted, okay? I asked them if they would buy it for me for Christmas and they said that they would give me $100, that my parents would give us $100 for Christmas presents. So they said that they would give me $100 towards the iPod, but I had to wait until Christmas. They weren't going to give it to me sooner. They were teaching me patience at this point, and I didn't realize that they were doing that, but now I'm grateful that they did. I don't really have a lot of patience. I, I tend to want to work harder instead of being patient now. I like to buy things up front, which is why I finance this truck. Now, I'll get into that in just a little bit, but the iPad, the iPod Touch, you could finance, but my parents wouldn't let us do that. We had to save up. So my parents taught me a good save ethic. Now, when... When I was saving up, it took me about 45 days to save $300 because of course, I wanted to spend money on other stuff. I was buying shoes, I wanted to buy clothes, I wanted to buy stuff for my locker, I was in junior high. Oh man, I, I remember this just like it was yesterday. So, I finally saved up my money, $300, and we go to the store to buy the iPod Touch, and we're all ringing it up, and my parents didn't tell me this because they wanted me to learn a lesson. But I went to buy the iPod Touch. I had $300 cash money in my hand. I couldn't even wait, okay? We, they took me down to Logan. They made me pay them for gas money. They made me split the gas money because Logan was 30 minutes from where we lived. And I went in to buy this iPod Touch and with tax, it came out to $318. And I only had $300 and I asked my parents if I could borrow $18 and they said, no, you're gonna have to wait and go work one more day and we'll come back down tomorrow and you can buy this, okay? Now, I remember that so vividly because I was in class, I was in seventh or, seventh or eighth grade and I was in math class and the teacher said, hey, if tax is 6%, and you have a $300 item, how much is it gonna be? And without a question, I said, $18. And she said, how did you know that so fast? And I said, because my parents taught me that I had to save up and earn this money, and I told her my story that I just told you guys. So that right there was, it was a lesson. that In disguise, I didn't realize what my parents were doing. I was pissed off that they wouldn't give me $18. I knew my parents had money. I, my dad used to walk around with a stack of cash in his pocket, which actually, I learned from him. I will walk around with cash in my pocket now because if you want things, you're gonna have to have the cash to pay for them. And you've gotta learn how to invest your money and use your money wisely. So, what I did was, 
A couple years later, I got my permit. In Idaho, we got a permit at 15 years old, and I, I, my parents spent half the money of my first car up to $2,000. So they would give me up to $2,000. And my mom said, the smart thing to do here would be to save up $2,000 so that you can get the most amount of money that you can for this vehicle. Well, uh, like I told you, I'm not very patient. So what did I do? I started looking at cars as soon as I had $500. And I started saving and I was working every day. I was in high school and in Idaho we would do uh, four day weeks. We went to school from 8 to 4 p.m. I played lacrosse from 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then I would work from 7 to 9.30 and that's where I made my money. So not very much income at the time. Um, a couple hours a day I was making $8 an hour at this point. I was 16, or 15 years old and barely over minimum wage. Okay, and. The reason why they wouldn't pay me more is because they didn't get paid more than that. When they opened the business, they either hired somebody on at minimum wage or close to, and they saved that money and they invested it, so they wanted to teach me that lesson. It's not about how much you make, it's about how you spend what you make, or how you save what you make in their in their uh, eyes. So. They paid me that money, and so I saved up and saved up and saved up and saved up, and I started selling some of the things that I had. I had a bicycle. It was a We the People bicycle. It was white and purple. I sold it for $500, and I think I paid like $750 for it, but I wanted a car, so I wanted to gather all the money that I could, and I was trying to get that money sooner so I could have a car, okay? I was coming out of eighth grade, going into ninth grade. I wanted a car, and I found this car in Smithfield, Utah. It was 20 minutes away from my house. I had no way to get there. I had no friends with licenses, so I asked my parents to drive me to look at this car and they said okay what is it and I showed them and they said you don't want that car you're in high school you're gonna be it's allowed it was a 1992 Chevy Camaro with a 350 in it and a three-speed transmission it was cherry red it had Kreger SS replica wheels on it and I remember being so excited like I'm even getting excited now I was so excited about this car my dad always had muscle cars growing up he showed me all these Corvettes Chevelles Novas everything I, I was so excited to have a muscle car and my mom said no you need a car that gets good gas mileage or you're gonna spend all your money on gas and my dad said you're gonna spend all your money in in building this vehicle but I'll support you because I did that too and I know the feeling that you get but you're gonna to have to also remember about insurance because we're not gonna pay for your insurance. And so then I said, okay, th you're right. There's no way I'm gonna be able to afford this. I'm gonna get pulled over. Cops are gonna harass us. So what did I go do? I went and bought the car. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have bought the car, but I went and bought the car and my parents split that money with me. And I think they gave me a thousand or $1,200. It was right around there. I can't remember what I ended up paying for the vehicle. So I bought the car and guess what I forgot again? Sales tax, registration, licensing. So I bought the car and I couldn't even drive it for a few more weeks because I had to save up $265 so that I could buy this Chevy Camaro and actually drive it on the road. So it sat in the garage for a while and I just, I hooked up a sound system. And <laughs> man, telling this story is like just going back to the day that I did this. So anyway, I buy this car and a couple months later, I got sick of the car, okay? I don't know why I got sick of the car. I really loved the car. I did get a speeding ticket. I got pulled over doing 100 miles an hour in it. The speedometer didn't work, and I knew I was going way too fast, and that was my excuse is that the speedometer didn't work, but really, we were just driving fast. So what did I do? I said, I want a new vehicle. I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna post it, and I'm gonna trade it for another vehicle. So I posted it up for trade. I paid $2,200 or $2,400 for it or something like that, and I said, okay, I'm gonna list it for $4,000 or trade. So then somebody with a Mustang, a Pro Charge V6 Mustang, it was a 2003 or 2001, I can't really remember the exact details, but I posted this Mustang and I traded him and I had my sister drive me down there. And it was a manual. I didn't even know how to drive a manual when I got there. So I had to have my sister drive it home. And the next day I learned to drive a manual by driving to school and I killed it. I was actually late because I killed it so many times and I left at the normal time for school. Anyway, with that being said, let's move forward into about nine months later okay i had this car i souped it up i did some work to it we painted we tinted tail lights we did we did so much work to this car i sold that car for seven thousand dollars okay now let's go back 22 or 2400 car i traded it for somebody who listed this car at i think 4800 dollars and i gave him a trade straight across trade and a uh, sound and i left the sound system that was his big deal the sound system was the the reason why he wanted the car so then I took and I sold that for $7,000 and I made five grand just like that. In a year, I was rolling, okay? So what did I do with that money? Of course, I went and bought another vehicle. 
Okay, I didn't buy a whole $7,000 vehicle. I spent $5,000 on a vehicle and I kept the $2,000 to put more money into the vehicle. Well, my dad said, hey, why don't you take that money and buy another vehicle and you can make some more money. Okay, so this is why I say I couldn't have done this without my parents. My dad taught me that work ethic and the grind and saying, hey, I used to be a car dealer and we used to do this every day. You could make easy $1,000 again or another $5,000 if you just invest that money. So what I did is I took that money, I bought another Mustang, and it was $5,000, and then, I, no, let's go back. Okay, so I took that money, it was $4,000, okay? I went to an auto auction, it was a public auto auction, they wanted $5,000 for the car, I gave them $4,000 for the car, and then I took the rest of that money, and I bought another Mustang with it. It was a, some crappy V6 Mustang. On my way home from buying the other Mustang, I was uh, searching on KSL. We stopped to eat at the, it was in Woods Cross, it was at the McDonald's, and I stopped there, and I was looking on KSL for another car. I just bought a car. What was I doing looking for another car? I was looking for more ways to make money. Not just celebrate what I had, but I wanted to make more money because making that $5,000, that was more fun to me than buying the car. So what I did is I texted this lady. She was asking $3,000 for the car, and I said, I don't want to spend all my money. I texted her and offered her $1,500 for the car, and she was very rude, and she said no. Okay, I probably deserved that. Fast forward into the next morning, she texted me and said, hey, my husband got arrested last night. If you want, I will give you $1,500, or give me $1,500 for the car because that's what I need to bail him out. I said, sure thing. I even left school. I had my sister drive me down to do this car, and I told her I would split the profit on this car. So my sister drove me down. We bought the car. We split the money. Um, the next day, I sold that car for $3,500. All I did was I cleaned and waxed it, I painted a few things, I tinted the tail lights, and I detailed the, the heck out of it. Okay? So just like that, I was rolling. Okay? I did that so many times until I bought, until I still had that $4,000 Mustang that I got, and I said, okay, I'm not going to spend this money on the car that I want. I'm going to make the car that I want or the car that I have, the car that I want. So I started sanding the, the body of all my hard work. I started sanding it. I had no idea what I was doing. My dad kind of guided me through it. I ordered sandpaper off of eBay. I had a hose and I was sanding it in my driveway. Now everyone's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? There's nothing wrong with the paint. I wanted a Grabber Blue Mustang. So then I put this Grabber, I, I did all my body work on this Grabber Blue Mustang and I said, hey, I want to do this again, okay? So I did all the body work on this car. I sold that car that I paid $4,000 for, for $10,000. I paid $4,000 for it, put about $1,500 into it, drove it for like nine months, and then sold it for $10,000. It was a one of one car. It was a 2003 GT Mustang, you know, and I painted the interior. Like I did so much work to that car. I made it just awesome. And then I sold it for $10,000. Clean retail was $7,200 on that car. He wrecked his car and got an insurance check for $10,000 and gave it all to me. He had no idea what he was doing, but it was a beautiful car, so he did it anyway. Okay, so let's fast forward into, I'm 17 years old, I'm about to graduate high school, and I said, what am I gonna do for work, okay? I don't wanna work at my parents' pizza place forever. I, I liked it, and it was fun, and I was really good at it, but I didn't want to do that forever. So I said, okay, I've been flipping cars this whole time. What am I going to do in life that builds my dream? Okay, how am I going to make a ton of money? And that was my goal going into it. And this is why I failed. Okay, my goal was how can I make the most money? Not what can I do to live life to the fullest? So I went in and I said, dad, you were a car dealer. I need some tips. I want to start a car dealership. What can I do? And he said, okay, I've got this property. I'll rent the property to you out. We'll make a deal. Um, we're going to go through all the process to get the, your dealership stuff so that you can do that. Okay. Now, this is another thing. My parents did help me in life. They didn't give me anything. They helped me. Okay. And if you're upset that somebody else's parents is buying them stuff, you're not really upset that their parents are buying them stuff. You're upset that your parents aren't buying you stuff. That's the, that's the hard truth of it. You're jealous that somebody else has parents with work ethic and you're mad that yours don't because they don't offer up that skill set advice to you. So I said, dad, we're going to go through all this stuff. My dad went through it all with me. Okay. That's how we bonded. He was, I, I was lucky to have that. Okay. And I'm grateful to have that, but that's not why I'm here today. I'm here today because of the things that they taught me and how I excelled in life because of those things. So I opened up a dealership. Let, actually, let's go, let's go back just a second. I had a 2000 
four Subaru WRX that I bought. I spent $7,800 on it, and it was a four-cylinder. My dad was so mad that I bought this rice rocket because it wasn't a V8, and, you know, he's old school. So V8s were his thing, and it was loud. My mom was mad. The windows were tinted. There were stickers down the side of it. She thought I was going to get pulled over all the time and get in trouble, and what happened? exactly that I started getting pulled over I started getting in trouble so one day I was driving through town and I revved up my vehicle at somebody and they got really mad they came out to race me I raced them they got really mad and they ran me off the road okay after that my car was wrecked I wrecked the front bumper I ripped my exhaust off I had a dent in my door so we called the insurance I told them the vehicle that ran me off of the road they ended up catching that kid and his insurance paid me forty eight hundred dollars to fix my car Instead of fixing my car, I took that money, I used it to invest in the dealership and buy my first three vehicles, pay my licensing, pay my insurance costs up front so that we got a better deal on insurance. Long story short is I used that money to invest into what I wanted my career to be. Okay, I could have put it back into my car and just had my one car, but I used it to start a foundation to build more money on. Again, a lesson and skill set that I learned by investing into cars before. So with that being said, I started my dealership, okay? I felt like I was rolling. I got, I got a loan and we had, I had my first three cars and then I got a loan and I had to split the profit that I got from make, selling vehicles and I had to give a kickback. I had to split 50% of the profit for the money that I loaned out on these vehicles. Well, after working with my mom and dad and not finding the fulfillment that I wanted in life, I started to blame the job, okay? I got into drugs, I got into partying, I started selling drugs, and I got arrested for that. I lost everything that I had, okay? I got charged with multiple felonies, my house raided, and all the friends that I thought were my friends, they were really there because we were partying, they had a place to go that wasn't their own, and they didn't have to stay at their parents' house. I lost every one of those friends when I got arrested. My friends, friends, stole stuff from my house, they took, you know, what was left after I got arrested. Not one of them came to visit me in jail. The only one that came to visit me was my ex-wife, and she supported me through the whole thing. She called me. She put money on my books. My family put money on my books. Um, I, I had to pay my parents back the money that they used to bail me out of jail. They bailed me out of jail, and I had to go get the money out of my bank account and pay them back, okay? They didn't even bail me out of jail, and they waited three weeks, and they said, we're not going to bail you out because you need to learn a lesson that this is not how you want to live life. You need to sit there and realize what you did. You had everything. You're 18 years old, you were a business owner, and you screwed that up. And they were right, okay? So after that, I learned a really valuable lesson is one, your family doesn't owe you anything. Two, your friends are not your friends. And three, the only thing that you have in life is what you put into life. If it comes easy, it'll go easy. If friends come easy, they'll go easy. If money comes easy, it'll go easy, okay? So, I lost everything. I get out of jail, I have $8 to my name, my girlfriend at the time, who was going through court stuff with me, and that's where I was in life at this point. I'm 18 years old, I'm a felon, my face was on the front of a newspaper, my house got raided, and I thought my life was over. I really did. I sat and I cried and I cried and I cried and I said, what am I gonna do? I went back to work. Okay. I went back to work and I started selling cars again and I said, this isn't what I want to do. I'm not happy. I got into drugs. I started doing all that. I've got to find a different job that makes me good, solid, steady income. So I went and got a factory job and I hated that. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. But they paid me really well. So I stayed there. I worked at night. I didn't have a social life because all my friends I got rid of. I didn't talk to anyone. I didn't party with anyone anymore. I was on probation. I couldn't even be out past nine o'clock at night. Okay. I'm a, I was a grown up and I couldn't even be past nine o'clock at night out on the streets. I had to be in at home and check in every day, call in for a drug test. I said, this is not the life I wanted. So what I started doing is I started finding ways to build my own personal life. Okay. I looked for a house. I didn't have any money, okay? So I had to go to somebody and I said, hey, I know your house is for rent. Um, would you be interested in selling it to me? Let me rent it because I don't wanna spend money on rent. I wanna buy a house. Let me rent it for two years and I'll pay it off. Two years, I promise you I can make enough money to pay it off. I was 18 years old with $8 to my name. And they believed me. 
They really did. They believed me. I sold myself enough to where they believed me. I rented the house. I started fixing the house right away. I started using all the things that I learned from my parents. My dad remodeled homes. I started doing it myself. I started sanding the hardwood floors. I pulled the carpet out. I went to Home Depot and I spent all my money on paint to redo the house. Lights, light fixtures, um, appliances. I, I redid the fence. I redid the yard. I laid sod. And I sold the house before the two years came that I was supposed to pay the house off. Just like that, I made $90,000 in one year and I thought that I was rolling, okay? I thought I was making so much money. I bought another Subaru, I bought another truck. I stopped selling cars because I thought I had made it. 100 grand in a year, I never thought that was gonna happen. Almost 100 grand in a year. So, I stopped working, I started playing video games again and I started sitting on that money, I bought a bunch of vehicles and I kinda wasted it, okay? so. Time came around and I'm like, okay, uh, it's time to buy another house, what do I do? So I went to go buy a house and they said, you don't even have enough money to put down to buy a house. And I said, well, my first house, I didn't actually get a loan on, I did a balloon payment on it, which is pretty much, they, you set a date and they say, hey, by this time you have to pay off all this, but not until then. So they said, wait, you actually didn't get a loan on your first house? And I said, no. So we started running the numbers, I bought my second home with zero cash down, and it was, oh man, it was so cool. There was so many people who said I couldn't do it, but at this point I had two vehicles that I wanted. I bought the Challenger that I wanted. So I had a Power Stroke, I had a Subaru, and I had a Challenger, and my wife also had a Subaru, and I thought I was rolling, okay? So then what did I do? <laughs> I started looking for a house that I was gonna remodel. I bought a completely torn, stripped house, and I started investing all my time and money into it to rebuild this house. The house that I bought was one mile from work, and that's why I originally went there, and then I got another job offer in the middle of it. I started, I went to work at Jimmy John's. I was not as free to do the stuff that I'm doing now, okay? I didn't have the flexibility that I do now. So I started off as a manager in training at $38,000 a year. In three months, I became a general manager. They bumped my pay up to $40,000 a year, but, they added on a bonus. So I was able to make a percentage of the profit that I made the company back. And that was my big motivation is like, there was, there was really no cap on what I could make. It was a percentage of the profit I brought in. So I started making my people at work happy. I started taking care of my team. I started focusing on the guest, less on the profit. And the profit came later. So with nine months later, I became one of the youngest area managers in the nation for Jimmy John's. When I, when I became an area manager, I said, how am I gonna be a successful area manager? And I still was so people focused, I said, I wanna buy my second house this year, how am I gonna do that? So I had three GMs, none of them had their own house, so I said, I've gotta help them buy a house this year, every one of them, and if I help three people buy houses, I'm gonna be able to buy myself my second house. So what did I start doing? I started talking to them, I said, hey, do you wanna buy a house? Yeah, I wanna buy a house, but right now I'm living with my parents and it's free, and I just didn't allow the little excuses from them, so I said, hey, wouldn't it be nicer if you lived in your own house, if, you're, if your family was in your own house? One of them was renting. I said, what if, what if you weren't renting? One of them was renting from me. And I said, what if we could get you to a point where you got your own place, you know, you and your girlfriend could have your own house. So fast forward a couple months later and one of them started applying for a loan. The next one started applying for a loan. One of them moved into a town home, okay? He didn't buy a house, but he got his own place. And so we were moving in the right direction. One of them got approved for 240 something thousand, something like that, and so he started looking for a house. The house next door to his parents, this is the one that said, I wanna stay, you know, I'm living with my parents, I don't really wanna move, they're my friends. The house next door came up for sale and we were able to buy him that house because we were already so far along in the process that when the opportunity came up, we got him that house, okay? Another one of my GMs bought their own house and my plan was working, okay? Everyone was getting their houses, they were doing better at work, they were more fulfilled, and what happened to me, I, I bought my second house, my trailer, my camp trailer. Um, I, you know, I live on the road quite a bit, I travel a lot, we do a lot of sand duning, and my plan worked. I bought my second house, and that's how I became the area manager that I am. I made other people's goals more important than my own. I made their lives more important than my own. I made their personal goals more important than my own. And how did I help, you know, how did I get to the point where I got this truck? I helped my general managers get nice vehicles. I helped them pay off debt. I, I was helping them so much that it, it motivated me to do it more in my own personal life. And 
we got to this point. So I didn't stay at the bottom at Jimmy John's. I wasn't content. I, I worked my way up. I worked really hard every day. I put other people's lives before my own. I went in on my birthdays to work for them so that they didn't have to. I, I, I did everything I could to make my job important to me so that they cared about my personal goals too and I was able to get the stuff that I have now. I put a little bit of money into my Challenger. I rebuilt my Challenger, which I'll put on the screen right here. And it wasn't enough for me. So I sold that, I bought a Razor, I wanted to go off-roading, and then I bought a truck because I needed a truck to pull the Razor, and then I started flipping vehicles again. I started buying trailers, I started redecking trailers, I started redoing frame stuff, and I said, you know what, this stuff is what actually makes me more happy than making money. Redoing all these vehicles, making a mine, and then selling them to somebody who gets a joy off of something that I built. So that kind of leads us into a year ago. A year ago, I bought a 2015 F-250 Platinum that I could not afford. I, I financed that thing through the roof. I paid 13.99% interest on it. I put $1,000 down on it, and like I said, I couldn't afford it. My payment was $980, and I wasn't using it to make me any money. So what did I do? I started looking into ways to make money for this truck. I said, I'm going to start a YouTube channel all about this truck. I'm going to film the build. I'm going to share as much information as I can with people and that was always kind of like my lifelong dream was being a content creator being on TV I always watched Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and I wanted to have fun and have people pay me so I bought this vehicle to tow all my stuff I way overpaid for the vehicle I way over financed it and I think total over the seven year loan I would have paid like thirty five thousand dollars in interest and the vehicle cost was $45,000. So that really tells you how I screwed myself. So what did I do? I started making money on a side job to pay for the truck because my Jimmy John's job was just paying for my house at that time and just paying for my bills. So I had to bring other sources of income in. I was still redoing vehicles and making money that way. I was still working on my house, which I still live in. And I went to Jimmy John's. After I went to Jimmy John's, I didn't really have a ton of extra money, so I had to have those extra sources of income. Now, after I got those extra sources of income, I figured out yet again that that was what I really loved to do in life, was to work hard and build my own career and, and my own name. So after that, I started making YouTube videos. I made a video, my first video ever, and the, one of my biggest videos is how to add 230 horsepower to your 2015 6.7 Power Stroke. That video got me on a dealer ambassadorship with the tuning company that I sell tunes for. Now, after I made that video, I went and put rock lights on my truck, and the company who I was making or putting rock lights on my truck, they said, "Hey, um, if you, if you want a discount code, you can offer a discount, and we'll give you a kickback." Okay. So I started building all these relationships with people by making content, and eventually, it led me to this truck right here. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys right now what I do to afford this truck. I financed this truck not through the roof. I spent years building my credit up. I sold my F-250 Platinum. I paid down my credit cards so that I could afford this truck. My credit score went from 514 to 763 in the span of one and a half years. So that way I didn't have to pay a ton of interest. Now, anybody who's gonna watch this video and say that you need to buy a vehicle outright, you couldn't be more far from wrong. You need to save that money so that you can build other cash flow so that you can have stuff like this without waiting five years of saving. So here's what I do for a living now. I still work at Jimmy John's, okay? I, have not, I do not own the company that I work for. I afford this vehicle by working a daily job, 6.30 in the morning to three o'clock in the afternoon. After I get off work, I immediately start thinking about ways that I can make more money content I can make for other people, commercials I can make for other companies, um, things I can do for other people, value I can add to other people's life. I started a dog channel so I could offer information to Rottweilers because my dogs cost me $300 a month. $300 a month, my dogs. So I had to make a YouTube channel for them so that I could get more income coming. And it was a shot in the dark. My first video went viral, 60,000 views, just like that. I had a thousand subscribers. My dog channel passed my personal channel and I was making more money from my dog channel on ad revenue than I was on my personal channel. So as soon as that happened, I started investing more time into both channels. I still wanted my personal channel that I really loved, but I wanted my dog channel because 
it was making me money. It's making me good money, and it doesn't make me a lot of money, but it definitely brings in more money than I had coming in before. So now I'm rebuilding trailers. I'm still rebuilding the house that I did, okay? With that house, interest rates are really low. When I sold my truck, my debt to income was in line. I was able to refinance my house. I gained $180,000 in equity, and I did a cash out refinance. I paid off all my debt, tied it into one home loan. I still live in the house now. I dropped my house payment and total credit card payments and stuff like that, $900, and had more cash flow in my pocket, okay? I went and bought this truck. I didn't put any cash down. My credit score was good enough. I got 4.64% interest. My truck payment on this is $1,400 a month, but now that truck makes me more than $1,400 a month. If I sell tunes, the commission I make off of that pays for the truck. I sell parts. I get commission for sending people to companies where I make money off of these parts. I don't use my Jimmy John's paycheck to pay for this truck. And if you expect that there's gonna be one job or one source of income that buys you a vehicle like this, I have this truck, I have my 40 foot toy hauler, um, I have my 2019 Can-Am X3, I have my 2018 Chevy 1500, which my work pays for as my daily driver, and then actually I have a 2021 Chevy 1500 that they have ordered for me, it will be here in March. But if you think that one specific job, or if you're looking for one thing that's gonna pay for all that, you're never gonna find happiness in life what pays for this stuff is the fulfillment the love and the fun that I have doing the things that I do that end up paying for this so I shared all this stuff with you guys I work so hard every day I work on my YouTube channel from 4 o'clock in the afternoon until midnight almost every single day and then when I have weekends I don't party now okay JD who's helping me film this video today I'll drop a link down to his stuff in the black in the bio he helps me film on weekends, Saturdays and Sundays. We film from 8 in the morning until 10 or 11 at night. We sit up endless nights filming, editing, trying to get to where we want to be as content creators. We want to share this stuff with you guys. We want to benefit other people. So the commission off of rock lights, tuning, wheels and tires, lift, um, helping people buy parts. People will message me on Instagram all day, sometimes to the point where I get so stressed, I can't even focus because my phone is ringing so much. I can't even work on videos because my phone's ringing so much. Hey, where did you get this? Where did you get this? Where did you get this? I'll help you. I'll help you. I'll help you. So what did I start doing? I started doing Amazon associate and affiliate links. I started asking companies for discount codes so that I could buy the products from them and then I would sell them and turn a profit and that way I could pay for this stuff. So Headlights on my last truck. I sold headlights. I sold tuning. I sold cold air intakes. I sold exhaust parts and I paid for them out of my pocket. I paid for them with my saved money, shipped them out to the people and then eBay or wherever my storefront was would clear that money and put it back in my bank account. I was taking a risk that a lot of people are afraid to or won't ever do to help other people so that I could afford this truck. Okay. Now, the people who call me spoiled, entitled, they say that I don't deserve this truck. You're dead wrong. I work so hard for the stuff I have and I work every single day. But I love it so much that it's not really work. It's hard work and it's dedication and it's time. But it's not really work. I'm doing what I love. I'm building a portfolio. I'm building relationships. I can go anywhere in the country and have connects out in most cities because I've helped them get parts to build their dream vehicles. Okay? So with all that being said, this is the part that you guys have been waiting for. What is my plan with this truck, okay? So my plan with this truck is to help somebody one day when we hit 100,000 subscribers, I want to give this truck away to one of you guys who have supported me, okay? Now, I know that we're a long way from there. I only have 1,284 subscribers right now, but you guys helped me get this truck. Anybody who bought parts from us, you help pay for this truck. So I'm gonna do it as a giveaway. I watch uh, enthusiasts, I watch 8080, I watch the Diesel Brothers. All these people are changing people's life with giveaways. I wanna do that with this truck. So what my plan is, is to build this truck, drive it, use it to build my channel, and pay for this truck with my own hard time and money, and then give it to one of you guys. Like, I am so far from entitled and spoiled that you can't even imagine I want to give away a $90,000 truck to one of you guys that I'm still making monthly payments on right now. All my time and money has gone into this and I'm going to give it away. So 
if you guys learned anything today or if you guys want to learn anything else please drop a comment down below let me know what you guys learned let me know what you would like to learn let me know what kind of content you want to see with this truck because the next year or the next two years while we hit this goal are going to be phenomenal. We are going to have so much fun. We are going to meet new people. We are going to build relationships with people who I never thought I would meet. We are going to reach out and we're going to help people film. We're going to go shoot footage. We're going to help JD blow his channel up. We're going to help our buddy Ian over here blow his channel up. He's a skier and he wants to get huge. We are going to help as many people as we can and in turn we are going to pay off this truck and give it to one of you guys. So if you are interested in winning this truck all you have to do is subscribe, follow the channel and when we hit that point we will do a giveaway. I'm not really sure exact details on it yet but I'm super excited for this. So please join me on this journey. Thank you for watching to this point if you have and drop a subscribe on the channel. Thank you guys and peace out. Thank you.